The aim of this video is to get across to you the very basics of IV flu prescribing based on the NICE guidelines of 2013. Before we even begin to prescribe fluids, we need to take certain things into account. Does the patient need maintenance fluid, or are they eating and drinking a little? In which case we'll need to take this into consideration when we prescribe our IV fluids. What are their urea and electrolytes like? Are they normal, or are there signs of renal failure? Are they on any drugs that may affect their use and ease? Is the potassium low, normal, or on the high side of normal, or high? If so, we'll need to err on the side of caution when considering the amount of potassium to prescribe. Examine the patient. Do they appear dry with signs of dehydration? Do they have postural hypertension? Do they have peripheral edema or other signs of overload? Do they have any abnormal fluid losses such as a stoma, an NG tube on drainage, vomiting and diarrhoea, which we will need to replace in addition to any maintenance fluids? Do they need fluid resuscitation before we start with maintenance fluids? Since this is a basic guide, we're going to look at maintenance fluid. Maintenance fluid is the total amount of fluid we require per day, assuming everything else is normal. When prescribing maintenance fluids, we need to use the patient's ideal body weight. Most patients' actual body weight will fall within this range if we look at a BMI chart, but it can be used when dealing with obese patients and use their ideal weight rather than their actual weight, otherwise it will be easy to overload them. Our daily requirements are between 25 and 30 ml of fluid per kilogram per day, very approximately 1 millimole per kilogram per day for each of the following, sodium, chloride and potassium. We also need about 50 to 100 grams of glucose per day to prevent starvation ketosis. It's important to remember that these figures include any eating and drinking that the patient may already be doing. So let's say that our patient weighs 70 kilos and appears to have a normal body habitus and their urea and electrolytes are normal. That works out at between 750 and 2100 mils of fluid, approximately 70 millimoles each of sodium, chloride and potassium, and 50 to 100 grams of glucose. Also for ease, I'm going to assume, however unlikely, that our patient is not eating or drinking anything and therefore requires all this giving us maintenance fluids. Now let's look at the content of common fluids we have available. If we look at a 500ml bag of 0.9% sodium chloride, it contains 77 millimoles of sodium and 77 millimoles of chloride. Considering that we don't really need more than 70 millimoles of sodium or chloride for 25 hours on this patient, it's already fairly clear that we shouldn't be giving much more than a 500ml bag of saline to them for maintenance. A 500ml bag of 5% glucose contains 25 grams of glucose. Since we need between 50 and 100 grams of glucose per day and still have between 1,250 and 1,600 mils of fluid left to give, we can prescribe three 500 ml bags of 5% glucose. Finally, potassium. Both sodium chloride and glucose can be had without potassium or with 10 millimoles or 20 millimoles of potassium added to it. We still get a little twitched over prescribing potassium and rightly so because it can be dangerous. Whilst the use and ease are normal on our patient, I'm going to be Mr Cautious and only use 20 millimoles of potassium in three of my four bags giving a total of 60 millimoles rather than 70 millimoles. And then I'll recheck the use and ease tomorrow and see which way the potassium has gone. Why? Well, because I always feel it's easier to add more than to try to suck it back out of the patient if we've given too much. What speed to give each bag at? Well. 2,000 mils in 24 hours works out at 83 mils per hour for each bag. We can achieve our daily target using any combination of the available crystalloids. An accurate fluid balance chart is needed so we know exactly what our patient is getting in terms of fluids and use needs should be done daily. Reduced volumes of 20 to 25 mils per kilo per day of maintenance fluid may have to be considered for more frail patients, patients prone to cardiac failure or with renal dysfunction. No patient should be on a pure maintenance fluids for more than three days without an expert review. Remember that maintenance fluids do not provide nutrition. In addition to maintenance fluids, we should consider any additional losses that the patient may have and replace those taking into account the contents of these losses. For further information on this subject, please visit www.nice.org.uk.